Scenes from McLaughlin Parade Field, teams from all services participating in this year's amazing race in support of Sexual Assault and Abuse Prevention Month. Hello and welcome to Mead Week, I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, Mullins Track is closing for repairs. A look at the Key Bridge Salvage Operations Plan, courtesy of the Army Corps of Engineers. And it's back to 1937 for some Fort Meade canine history. These stories and more, but first Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Michael Sapp was recognized as a Central Maryland Chamber of Commerce's Government Advocate of the Year at a gala event this week at Maryland Live. Staff Sergeant Victoria Boynton from the Defense Media Activity was named Military Service Member of the Year, and Vivianette Cologne from Meade Middle School is the Administrative Support Staff Member of the Year. The event recognizes the region's outstanding business owners, educators, first responders, and volunteers. Congratulations to all. In other news, the Army Corps of Engineers Baltimore District released a video this week detailing the salvage operations plan for the collapsed Key Bridge. The Key Bridge Response Salvage Operations Plan is complex and highly technical with many challenges above and below the surface of the water, but it can be understood in three concurrent priorities. First, we must clear wreckage like steel and concrete from the 700-foot navigation channel and as part of that effort, clear a 280-foot limited access channel within its span. At a depth of 35 feet, this will allow three major car carriers one-way traffic in and out of the harbor. While this is taking place, we must work to refloat the container ship Dolly and move it away from the Federal Navigation Channel. Once the Dolly is out of the channel, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and its partners in the Unified Command will continue to clear the remaining wreckage, ensuring the 50-foot deep Federal Navigation Channel opens back up to two-way vessel traffic. We are committed to undertaking this work with care and precision as we restore full service to a port that is so vital to our nation. Some news from MWR, Mullins Field and Track will be closed from April 22nd through approximately May 3rd. Parts of the track will be removed to replace old drainage pipes necessitating the closure. The second phase of the project is scheduled for June 3rd to the 14th, which will require another closure. Between the end of Phase 1 on May 3rd and the start of Phase 2, June 3rd, the track will be open, but there will be areas that are about a half inch lower than the surrounding track surface. Trip hazard signs will be posted. Stay tuned for any updates. As the month of the military child continues, we had a chance to talk with the Army and Air Force Exceptional Family Member Program, or EFMP, coordinators about their sensory playgroup. In conjunction with our Family Advocacy Program, we came up with our sensory playgroup, which is a sensory friendly playgroup for our children with special needs. So we take in consideration our children who may have sensory um, issues as far as um, they don't like a lot of noise, so we don't have music playing. Also, children who are sensory um, sensitive, so we have a lot of tactile play, we have a lot of motion play. I fall under the Military Family Readiness Center. Uh, we were uh, previously called Airmen and Family Readiness, but now that we have a Space Force, so we uh, service our families that are in Air Force and um, Space Force, our Airmen and Guardians. And so my role um, in conjunction with the Army is just to basically make sure that I uh, gather their needs. You can contact the EFMP program through Army Community Service at 301-667-5590. And finally this week, if you're familiar with Fort Meade's history, you probably know that it was established during World War I and after World War I evolved into a Tank Corps training post in the 20s and 30s. This is a story of Tank Corps Joe who rests in what was once a tank training field, now home to the Fleet and Family Support Center. Tank Corps Joe was actually the post mascot named by the post commander um, in the 1930s. He wandered onto post, is my understanding, and he just took up residence. And the Tank Corps actually, 66 infantry light tanks adopted him. And then eventually the post, the whole post adopted him. My understanding is that he enjoyed hanging out at the commissary and the dining facilities. So, you know, in 1937, he became ill and they knew he was rather old. And unfortunately, he passed away and the tank corps was so upset about it, um, so devastated by the loss that they actually held a military funeral for him and put him in a casket. And it said they buried him in one of the tank fields. So here we are today. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.